What's up, guys? Lewin here at GarageBand and beyond. Really quickly, I want to remind anybody out there who's interested in getting very deep discounts on the equipment that I review that you got to be signed up on my mailing list at garagebandandbeyond.com. Um, these discounts are going to be totally exclusive to the people on my mailing list, and these discounts are going to be better than Sam Ash or Guitar Center or B&H, you name it. Better discounts coming from my, <laughs> my mailing list because I personally call these companies and I work out discounts to get you guys access to stuff and discounts that nobody makes the effort to get. Um, so that's it. And they're short run sales. They don't last forever. They're like one week long. I don't send out a ton of emails at all. Um, but if you sign the list, you get a free home recording studio shoppers list as well. So there's that. And I think that's all I can say about that. So sign the list, garagebandandbeyond.com. Thank you. So today we're talking about how to get the best results out of your auto drummer, okay? Um, GarageBand 10 has this awesome thing. It automatically drops a drum track in there for you. And there's a lot of cool, simple ways to get the best drum auto drummer out of it. There are mixed reviews. Some people like it and some people hate it. Um, I think the people who hate it just haven't figured out how to use it. So hopefully we can find some people out there to convert, okay? So what I did was record a really simple guitar, acoustic guitar, bass, Part. Um, so I started with the acoustic guitar. I just recorded it to a click track. Now I will say you can do it to the auto drummer or a click track. Um, I personally just like, you know, my very first track, I just have a habit of recording the very first scratch track to a click track. Just that's what I like to do. But you can also do it to the auto drummer. So anyway, first thing was this acoustic guitar. Do the click. Okay, really simple. So then the next thing I wanted to do was add the bass in. So what I did right after the guitar track was turn on, um, you know, I went up here and I pulled this down and I told it to add a drummer. Now it's already got one. So I'll just turn this on so you can hear what it came up with after, you know, scanning my file. This is what it came up with. Right? It's already done a very good job of finding you know, the basic groove that I played, um, which is impressive because I just played the guitar part and then I played the bass part. You know, um, So now the bass part, just so you can hear it, is right here. Okay, really simple. So now I'm just going to basically show you how I do it and what I do. Okay, so now the first problem right here is that obviously the guitar part and the drum start at a different section. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of these. Just so you know, when you open up the auto drummer, you get two versions, you know, two different takes. So um, like in this section here, let's just solo this track. Um, so here, if you hear this part, this, <laughs> this part, it's just that, right? Now the second option it gave me is a lot more busy. Right? So you can hear, you know, instead of instead of like eighth notes on the hi hat, you get sixteenth notes on the ride over here. So anyway, so you get a section A and a section B automatically. You can decide if you wanna, you know, keep one or the other and you know, scratch this one or whatever, you can decide what you like to do. So most of the time, what I personally do is just keep one of the two that I like, and then I just sort of build upon that. Now, in this particular case, it sort of turned out that this ended up being a really nice B section for the song um, that I sort of came up with. So I left it in there because it seemed pretty cool. So anyway, so I've moved it now to the top of the song. So now it starts all at the right time. Okay. Now that's awesome. One thing you might want to do is have a little bit of a fill before the top of the song, right? So that's a very common thing. So let's just sort of add that in. And all I got to do is find this tool and I stretch the field out, let's say that much. Okay. Now let's hear what happened. That easy. Okay. Now, so now I have this verse part that I basically like, you know, um, I haven't gone in here this section and you know this stuff here i think is pretty self-explanatory the loud and soft and simple and complex thing if, if you can't figure this out <laughs> i don't know what's wrong with you it's pretty simple so anyway so uh let's say you know i like this pattern here and you can see now here's my b section to my song so let's just get to it and see what's going on <laughs> Okay, so 
that's pretty good. One thing I noticed just by looking at it right here is where this top of this B section is starting. So I would rather or the, where the drums think the B section is starting. So actually, it's right back here. So that's a very simple edit. Obviously, all I got to do is bring this back to here and then I bring this over to here and then I listen to it. Maybe that wasn't the most best. Okay, so that's it. Now it's now this section starts right at the top of the chorus or the B section of the song. So now I have this little bit of an outro here. And as you can see, it is, you know, this isn't long enough and I, it ends right here. Here's what's happening. Okay. So now since we've gone back to the A section of the song, what I'm looking for here is the end of the B section. So I'm just going to come up here with a command T and I'm just going to delete this section now. And then I come back here. And what I want is this section to be here now, right? So I'm going to make sure I'm in the right track. I select it. I copy it. Now the cursor is here. I can drop it in at the right place. Nice and easy. And then I'm just looking for the last hit. Okay. So the last hit is right here, as you can see. Um, it's a little bit easier to see it on the guitar track than the bass track, but this is indeed the last hit. So another command T will cut this for me. And now the ending should be right. Okay, so there you can hear that the auto drummer actually made a different decision than what I would have liked. So let's expand this a little bit and just see, yeah, the cut's a little bit early. So what I would do here is just peel it out a little bit longer. Boom, right? So you can see that it is giving me a few different options. Maybe I'll cut this back to about there. Yeah, there we go. Now we have something that we have an event that's happening in time with the last hit on the guitar. So let's give this a listen. Perfect. Okay. Now, one of the most important things I think to getting your drum track really sounding like it's a part of the song is right down here. You'll see this follow thing that you can click on and or off. Um, so right now, for some reason, it's trying to chase the classic electric piano, which there's nothing on there. But if you click on this, it'll give you a list of all your tracks. So remember, the bass and the drums are, you know, sort of in a you know typical pop and typical blues and rock and that kind of stuff in a typical band format. Bass and drums are sort of twins. So what I'm going to do is connect this to that bass track. Now you can see how dramatically that just changed. Like, let me just turn it on and off. See, so it's already removing. You can see it's removing pieces just to make it a little bit tighter. So let's just listen to it. Okay, so what you should be noticing is that the kick drum is a lot more connected to the actual bass part. Let me turn it off and you can hear it again. And then there's just a little, there's more events, it seems like on the hi-hat or something, when it's not following that bass track. So here it is without the drummer following the bass track. <laughs> Okay, so it's actually, it seems like the snare is uh, decreased when I turn it off. Let's listen to it again. No, it's not the snare. What is it? Oh. It's kick drums. Okay, so it's removing some of the kick drums. Just to make, make it a little more sparse, a little more clean. you can hear yeah right so it's a little bit more clean it's a lot more sparse but it's a little more connected and a lot more clean so what I might actually do is just make this a little bit more complicated then the other things I like to sort of point out to people is if you are trying to you know create fills and stuff in the middle of a track it's actually not that uh, difficult all you really have to do is you know you can cut it anywhere you want and that tells the drummer that you want you know at the beginning of the cut you'll typically get a crash symbol <laughs> 
right? Mm -hmm. So anywhere you want a new fill, just cut at the end of where that fill would be, right? As you can see, anytime I cut it, it drops a fill in, right? So then with the fills, um, like down here, so say I wanna just isolate this one fill instead of affecting everything here. So I'm gonna just select just the area of the fill right here, right? And then I'm gonna meddle with it, I'm gonna mess around with it with this fill control. Now this is sort of, you know, <laughs> Right. This is just sort of like a fill, uh, different fills. I don't think it's necessarily less or more complicated. So that sounds less complicated to me than this, for example. Right. It's just these are different styles of fills. That's my take on it. Um, now, of course, you can say, I want this fill to not have any hi-hat or snare. I really want it to only have toms, right? So I, I'll come over here. I turn off the hi-hat. I turn off the snare, and I turn on the toms. Now this fill has no hi-hats or snare on it. So, you know, you, you can isolate these fills, and then you can manipulate them to whatever degree you want. Um, so that's, you know, the biggest thing I think is, like, cutting the cutting the track apart just to drop in fills wherever you want them um, and then messing around with the fills to get them to match your song as well as possible now the last thing i'm going to add to this is well it might be the last thing <laughs> we'll see go up to track up in the menus and go down to track header we're going to tell it to show our groove track so now that i've turned the groove track on you can see if I drag my cursor over here to the left side of these fields, you should be seeing a little star appear. So this is, you know, you tell it which track you want everything else to follow. In this case, I want everything to now follow the drums. So I click on that. It will give you some box to select here. So I'm going to tell the guitar to follow, and I'm going to also tell the bass to follow the drums even though the drums are following the bass. It just helps, you should be able to see when I click on it, um, you can see that it starts, you know, just sort of quantizing the piece uh, and just tightening it up to the drum track. So let's listen to it now that it's all grooved. So that's it as far as getting the piece to all sync up really well um, with your drums, and, or I'm sorry, with your bass and your guitar parts, you know? Um, so you're gonna be just telling the drummer to follow the bass, and then you're gonna groove track the whole thing. Um, now the other thing that I wanna just add is you don't feel like you're dedicated to these sounds, even though like I'm with Kyle, the drummer Kyle, and he's playing this half pipe mix or whatever. And his default drum kit is the SoCal drum kit. But if I wanted, like, whatever, retro rock, I can get these same patterns with just a different drum sound. Right? Which is just a nice option. So you can get all these different patterns with different sounds. It's really nice. Now, the other thing that I will say, when you're in here and you are mixing, wow, I don't know if you, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but somebody has got their wood chipper on next door and it is loud. Um, the last thing I would just add to this video is, you know, when you're in here and you are mixing the the different sounds of each drum, um, I personally don't really use a ton of compression. If I do, it's the tiniest, tiniest a bit you know, I don't really think it needs it very much. I think these recordings have already been done excellently. Um, sometimes you need it just to sort of tighten up the sound, just to isolate it a little bit um, from the mix so it can find its own place in the mix. Um, but anyway, minimal compression is what I typically use on the drums. Um, if you guys are Slate audio people, I always drop in... Um, things like the channel strip, uh, what's it called? The virtual channel, right? This thing right here, if it decides to pop up today, there it is. Um, the virtual channel and the tape 
thing. Where is it? Slate audio, virtual tape machine. And I mean, you can automatically hear the difference as soon as these things turn on, um, especially in the low end. Let, check out how much the kick drum and the, the low end of everything just sort of comes out. Check this out. I, I love these plugins. Here, I'll turn them off just so you can hear. when they're on and off i was just sort of turning them on and off there huge difference um love those plugins can't go wrong with the sleep digital stuff anyway so that's basically it you know um editing it playing in time is key <laughs> make sure you you know you play your parts in time um as you know cleanly as you can um editing that drum track apart locking it to the bass part groove tracking the whole thing all together that's how you're going to get the best results out of your drummer but a lot of experimentation um playing with the fills all that kind of stuff is a way to make it personal to your song um and also you know remember to play dynamically like if you have a section of your song that's like you know it's good to not just play like section a section b section c it's good to sort of you know taper into that like, like sometimes like i'll be strumming and then whatever you play like a, a fill on the guitar remember to be dynamic with your parts as you record what happens in the end is that you sound you know what the final recording sounds like is a band that has like been well rehearsed and they've worked out all these crescendos and all this kind of stuff just remember be dynamic with your playing um, between the sections, it really does help the overall recording um, sound more realistic, you know, and more like a band instead of one guy sitting in his bedroom or whatever. So, <laughs> uh, you guys, I think that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below, and uh, I will be answering them for the next few days. And uh, sign the mailing list at garagebandandbeyond.com if you want those discounts. And as always, I really thoroughly appreciate all your support. And, um, Hope you guys are having a great day. All right. I'll talk to you later. See ya.